I'm Andy Tiller. I'm responsible for product marketing at Asia Info. Asia Info is the largest supplier of IT software and services in China. And in the international market, we supply BSS systems, including CRM and customer experience management systems. And today I'm going to talk about uh, some of the experience we've had with that, in particular implementing omnichannel and its extension to what we call any channel. So first of all, I'm going to talk about what omnichannel is um, and uh, its logical extension, which I'm going to call any channel. Secondly, I'm going to look at a partial business case for omnichannel. We've seen a lot of uh, obvious benefits to joining up the channels, but uh, we found very little information that quantifies the benefits to operators of doing that in the telecoms industry. So we commissioned a company called North Stream Research to look at that, and I'm going to give you a quick view of their results. Then I'm going to, um, I hope I'm not uh, preempting Adrian from EY later, who's going to talk, talk about what telecoms companies can learn from other industries. Uh, I'm going to kind of say that, uh, you know, retail and uh, banking, of course, we can learn a lot from those industries, but in some senses, telecom telecoms is special, and there are some things which are more difficult. So what are those? And uh, in the context of omnichannel, and how can operators overcome those particular challenges with their IT systems? So first of all, what do I mean by omnichannel and its extension? Uh, really, there are two basic requirements for omnichannel. One is that, uh, you know, what's called the 360 customer view. So agents in any channel, whether the retail store or the call center uh, or the customer themselves in self-care channels, they can all see the same view of the interaction history and data. So, for instance, a, um, you know, a customer can begin a conversation with an agent in the call center and go into the retail store and the agent there can, you know, can see the same interaction history, knows the customer, uh, has the same view. Secondly, there's the related concept of channel switching, which means you can begin a transaction or dialogue in one channel and carry on from where you left off in a second channel. So an example would be you begin to fill your shopping basket in the web shop uh, and then go to a retail store and the agent there can uh, continue to fill your basket on, the on a tablet device and uh, you know, provide you guidance. You can look at the, the phones and complete your transaction. You don't have to start again. Uh, actually, just to break off, I was really interested by what Philippe said that, uh, you know, Generation Y um, doesn't seem to care about that. They want to, you know, start in Twitter and stay in Twitter. And uh, actually, I think I can understand that. I think maybe what they mean is they don't want to be forced to change channels. Because today, usually your experience, if you tweet your query or complaint, is you'll get, uh, you know, somebody from the uh, outbound call center tweeting back, you know, please ring our call center number so we can help you. And you have to change channel, which is frustrating and annoying. So, uh, what, of course, what you want is a reply back in the same channel you were using. But then if you later talk to somebody in another channel, uh, you want them to know where you, you know, know what your issue was and be able to carry on. So, so perhaps there's a deeper issue here. It's about not being forced to switch channel. And that's actually what omnichannel is all about. You can carry on and choose any channel that you like. The conversation can go on in any channel, but you can switch at any time. So those are the basic issues. But uh, beyond that, there's some other more advanced things which omnichannel can do. So for example, uh, customer behavior in one channel can influence the personalized offers that the customer gets in another channel. If you like an offer on Facebook, when you go to the website, you get directed to uh, pages for the thing you liked. If you, um, you know, have uh, some dialogue with the call center about a particular product offering, then when you go to the retail store, they have that information and they can tell you more about it. So it's these, the personalization of the, um, you know, the marketing offers to customers is a key thing. It's an integration of, real of, of the analytics with the omnichannel solution. And secondly, there's the concept which uh, some operators call impersonation, which means that an agent can actually help a customer out. They can not only see the customer's self-care view, for instance, on a website, but they can also engage as if they were the customer. And for example, if they're on the phone with the customer, they can put items in the shopping basket for the customer to review. So these are some slightly more advanced uh, omnichannel capabilities. And then any channel is uh, what our term for 
essentially infinitely extensible omnichannel. So not just integrating the call center, the retail store, the website, and the smartphone app, but increasingly integrating, fully integrating social apps. Today, um, you know, WhatsApp uh, is Chinese equivalent, WeChat, and so on. They have been traditionally communication channels. So you could begin a dialogue using uh, instant messaging with a call center agent, and maybe you can get some offers sent to you uh, in that uh, chat channel. But in the future, we're going to see these things becoming much more powerful. In fact, full self-service channels. Already uh, WeChat, uh, the Chinese WhatsApp, that's the number two uh, messaging app in the world, um, they're already a platform. So there are WeChat apps, uh, and WeChat provides support for payments and uh, other things which enable WeChat itself to become a full self-service channel. So customers will not only use it for messaging with operator agents uh, and receiving personalized offers, but they'll also use WeChat to top up their phone, uh, to buy a bolt-on package, and all of those interactions with the customer through that channel need to be integrated into the full customer 360 view. So this is what we mean by um, you know, any channel. It's the extension of the omni-channel environment to include any new channel. Today it's WhatsApp and WeChat and Facebook and Twitter, but in five years' time, when your CRM system will still be around, you know, what's going to be the popular app then and what will you have to integrate? So any channel is infinitely extensible omni-channel. And related to that, we see the need to support multiple customer IDs. So if you have a customer who, you know, you know their phone number and their account ID in the telecoms world, if you're interacting with them on Facebook or Twitter or WeChat, they have multiple other IDs. And very often you won't know that these customers are the same person until something happens where you can identify, right, that person there is already this existing customer. And at that point, you need to merge the customer interaction histories, the shopping basket, all the interaction records with the customer into a single view. So, so these things are fairly uh, sophisticated any-channel capabilities which operators uh, are interested to build. So um, I mentioned we're going to have a quick look at the business case. This is a partial business case, uh, and I'm going to go very quickly through it and uh, refer you to a white paper for more information. But the key thing here is that um, uh, we commissioned Northstream to look at, to try and quantify the benefits of omnichannel for operators. And they chose to look at Western European mobile operators in particular. And the approach they took was just to look at half of the business case, in fact, just the cost-saving part. Um, in other industries, such as retail, this isn't perhaps the most interesting bit. Omnichannel in retail is all about boosting sales. So there's a revenue upside case, uh, part of the business case. Whereas for, uh, for operators, perhaps this OPEX saving is, is also very, very important. So we asked Nord Stream to look at this particularly, see if they could quantify it for Western European mobile operators. And the approach they took was to, um, was to look at uh, the OPEX, that, uh, OPEX distribution for operators and to see how omnichannel impacts the different aspects of OPEX. Um, just to quickly cut to the results, they, their conclusions were Omnichannel seems to be a very high priority for operators who consider it vital to improve customer experience and NPS, uh, and that's backed up by the survey results which Mark showed earlier. So a lot of operators are working on it. Today's implementations are largely quite uh, immature, um, and uh, a lot are hampered by legacy IT systems. So IT is a bottleneck to really delivering a good uh, omnichannel experience, and that's true across all industries. They also looked at retail and finance uh, and concluded that the same thing is really true across the board, although perhaps retail has uh, got some very nice use cases. So the, the net result was that um, $4.6 billion of uh, OPEX could be saved annually across Western Europe by mobile operators if they get the omnichannel experience right. So we'll just have a look at uh, very briefly at the different aspects of that. Here was the, uh, the basic starting point for the model. They looked at a typical breakdown. So, for instance, uh, a, a mobile operator in Western Europe will typically spend 34% of its OPEX budget on marketing and sales. That works out at about $33 billion uh, annually. And, um, sorry. And so uh, 
Nordstream then looked at four specific benefits of omnichannel, and they tried to figure out, okay, what is the impact of these four specific omnichannel benefits on these different OPEX areas? And they came out with these conclusions here. So just to run through what those four areas are, uh, I don't expect you to read this, but I'll just summarize it for you. The key thing is that the first benefit is, of course, improved customer experience, customer satisfaction, improved NPS, and that particularly relates to uh, a reduction in the cost of renewal for the customer. And those uh, renewals at the end of a contract, typically they're, they're easier, there are fewer touch points to complete the renewal, and those uh, renewals go more often through the operator's preferred channels, the lower cost ones, uh, so less uh, commissions to pay to dealers and agents and so on. And um, so what uh, North Stream did was they tried to quantify this through uh, a lot of interviews, actually, with operators uh, and experts in this area. And they spent a lot of time doing that, and they came up with a range of results between uh, 0.3 and 1% of, of OPEX, in particular in this area of marketing and sales being a, a potential uh, you know, a place to save money with this. So that was the first one. The second one was more about uh, the ability to be much more efficient in launching new services across all channels and launching campaigns across all channels. And in this case, what happens is that uh, today, uh, it's often necessary to configure different business logic in different channels for a service launch or for a campaign. And, of course, that's a, there's a lot of repetition there, a lot of inefficiency. So if you can define the business logic just once for all of the channels, then you end up uh, with a lot less work to do in IT. So in this case, the main uh, uh, saving is in, is in IT. Can I move that one on? Yeah. Okay. The third one is the... Um, the ability to offload work from the agents in the call centers and in the retail stores. So uh, two things help here. The first is the single customer view means that much more often you can resolve the customer's issue on the first call uh, because all of the background information is available and whichever the channel the customer comes to, uh, the agent has the full background and is more likely to be able to help the customer directly rather than having to refer the customer on. And secondly, channel switching, the ability to carry on a transaction or dialogue in a different channel is also more efficient because instead of having to go back to the beginning in every channel where the agent has to repeat work that a previous agent did in another channel, uh, the, the interaction can carry on where it left off. So again, there's efficiency savings in offloading work from uh, agents here. And the final benefit is greater, the ability to do greater automation in back office functions. So uh, if all of the business logic is common to all of the channels, then it's possible to streamline order management, to streamline provisioning, customer support processes, KPI reporting, and other back office functions. And here there's a, a significant potential saving in uh, IT in particular. So the net result of these... Uh, um, this analysis showed that the OPEX savings are really reasonably significant for getting omnichannel right. So there's a good business case in terms of OPEX savings. And that doesn't include the uptick you'd also expect on the revenues. If you can be more efficient and give customers a better experience, particularly on shopping, then you'd expect to sell more, just as we're finding in retail where omnichannel is uh, vital for that. So this partial business case is encouraging. You can read the results on, uh, in a white paper that we've produced. You can visit the Asia Info website and find a page with much more information about that study if you're interested. But um, going on a little bit, I think it's, it's worth looking at um, you know, why telecoms is perhaps a little bit more difficult than, um, than other industries for solving this omnichannel problem. And... Um, I think the, you know, this, this uh, chart here begins to reveal the picture. So in, in industries such as retail, uh, of course, they have different channels. They want to connect the retail stores, the physical stores, with the online store, typically, and maybe with uh, apps for shopping. And so uh, you know, there's a lot of activity going on in the retail industry to make this happen and to allow people to switch channels, true omnichannel experience. But uh, retail is relatively simple compared to telecoms. Telecoms has much more complex products and services to offer. 
That means the business processes for order management and uh, particularly for order fulfillment are much more sophisticated and uh, much, many more branches and complexity. And so that causes uh, more difficulty for, for omnichannel. Uh, operators, telecom operators also have more channels. They have um, uh, more payment uh, options, so pre- and post-paid bills, for example, in addition to paying by cash or credit card. They have more complex customer service requirements. They're not just handling returns, they're also providing ongoing support for a, a long contract. And um, much more sophisticated analytics as well. And so, in practice, this does make it more difficult to implement omnichannel in telecoms than it, it is in retail. But on the plus side, there's equally potentially a lot more benefit in telecoms too, because telecoms operators have the opportunity to develop a long-term relationship with the customer, uh, ongoing relationship through the subscription, and to generate uh, very, uh, very detailed customer insights through big data analytics. They gather a lot of information about customers' behaviors and uh, preferences. And so the upside for Omnichannel joining all of this up is actually more than it is in, in retail as well. So more complex, but uh, potentially more interesting. So how can an operator deal with this uh, challenge of implementing Omnichannel in its IT systems? And really there are two, you know, at, at a, a fundamental le level, there are two approaches. One is to, um, to overlay the existing multi-channel infrastructure and the other is to rebuild it. And what I mean by the multi-channel infrastructure is this. So typically today, um, an operator might have many channels which are not uh, uh, totally joined up. So there may be different uh, business logic in the call center, retail store, web shop for the same process. That's quite often typically the case. You may not be able to channel switch if you want to, if you buy your phone over the uh, uh, internet and then want to return it in the store, you can't do that on Vodafone today in the UK from personal experience. And that's just one example of many places where the channels are not joined up. So, um, that means no single customer view for all the agents and no channel switching. What can you do? Well, um, one thing you can do is take particular customer experiences, such as commerce, so shopping experience, and you can provide an overlay. So there are some very nice uh, omni-channel commerce platforms that you can buy, and these are typically used by the retail industry, um, where you, you can create a, a complete joined up experience across, particularly across the digital channels, but uh, sometimes including the retail stores as well. So these omni-channel commerce platforms will provide product catalog, shopping cart, order orchestration, uh, admin tools for the web shop, uh, options to integrate to payment and logistics for delivery, uh, and some personalization as well. But um, it's uh, sometimes difficult to integrate existing legacy channels, such as the existing CRM system in the call center, you can't work in that and add something to the customer's shopping basket in the new digital omnichannel solution. So there are, there are pros and cons of this approach. You know, some legacy channels may get left behind. The alternative is the you know, build it from the ground up omnichannel architecture, where you, you begin by saying there has to be a clean separation here between the front end channels and all of the business logic and the customer data and product data down here at the back end. And uh, that requires a, a rebuild essentially for many operators CRM systems. So the front end channels uh, in this architecture can access the same business logic and the same data. So all agents have the same view and customers can switch from uh, one channel to another. And then the any channel extension is kind of obvious to this. If you've made a clean separation here, you can plug in new social apps and new channels. You just need an API to connect these new channels in. So uh, any channel, this is really an any channel architecture. And if we look at now how that would look for commerce, you can see here, for instance, the shopping basket here is now in the back end. So if we add a new channel at some future date, then the shopping basket can be shared with that channel as well. It's not restricted just to the channels that are supported in the overlay platform. Um, so we have, uh, similarly, if we add a new product or service, that's down here in the product catalog in the back end and can be shared by all of the, the channels. So this is a, an alternative. It's the any channel architecture. And um, so we end up with really quite a you know, difficult choice. It's the, the classic IT choice, as always, for any operator. Is you, can, you can either 
you know, continue to patch the existing IT systems and create an omni-channel experience as far as you can go, uh, adding one channel at a time. Every time you add a new channel, there'll be probably quite a complex IT project. Or you can build again from the ground up, which is quite risky, um, but ultimately potentially provides a, a, a longer term, more future-proof and more powerful solution. So um, I've been asked to stop. I'll stop there. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'll take any questions. Thank you.